Welcome to The Late Show. It is Thursday the 16th of November and I am very pleased to be joined tonight by Tony Pierce, who, who I, 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 you haven't changed in all the years, Tony, but um, our viewers are <laughs> a some bit of them, older. <laughs> a little bit. We're all getting yep. a little older. Um, so is the world. Yes, um, but indeed. our viewers, some of them might remember that you, you've you've been um, on the channel at various times over yep. over the last twenty years, and you know for thirty years you've been observing world events and trends, and um, you you have an excellence. Um, publication that you've produced called Light for the Last Days. So um, yes. we're very interested to hear your observations on what's going on in the world today, not least in the Middle East. Okay, thank Welcome. you. It's good to be with you. And yes, indeed, I believe we are in the last days and we need a bit of light from the Word of God. Yeah. And if you look into the Bible, you can see there's a whole lot of things happening which mm. line up with the scriptures mm. and the epicenter of it all is Elam Israel. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things which I occurred to me is that if you look at Jesus' teaching in Matthew 24, there are actually kind of three stages before the second coming. The first one is what you might call the wars and rumours of wars, the uh, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes in various places. These are the beginning of the sorrows. And I would say we're in that time now. Yeah. Yeah. The next time it comes up is then the time of the Great Tribulation when he says there'll be great tribulation such as has not been since mm. the beginning of the world until this time no not ever shall be. Yeah. And the third stage is obviously his return when he comes after the tribulation yeah. on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now, Tony, I should have said just before I kicked you off it, it, that um, we, we are going to um, have emails later in the show, probably after half the halfway mark. Yeah. Um, that will give you an opportunity to you know, email or text in response to what, what Tony says. And then we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully read as many of, of your emails and texts uh, coming up. So, yeah, you've, you've quoted there from, is it Matthew 24? Yes. Um, and, you know, there are some that would say, oh, well, all these events happened, you know, in AD 70. Yeah, can you give me a one-liner on, on why you would think that, that that wasn't the case? Yeah, the Son of Man didn't come in the power of, in the glory of heaven in the AD 70. This has to be a future event. Yeah, yeah. And also, the events, if you look at other scriptures, it all centers around Israel. Israel becomes the epicenter. Yeah. So when you see Israel back in the land, that's the budding of the fig tree and it's the fulfillment of the prophecies of Ezekiel and other passages which speak about the Jewish people being scattered to the ends of the earth, mm. then coming back to the land of Israel, planting trees and building up ancient cities, which you've seen them doing, yeah. and all the remarkable developments which Israel's made since 1948 of building up that land and in agriculture and technology and medicine and all the things which God has done through Israel uh, in developing what was a barren land into mm. a fertile land. And at the same time, attracting the enmity and the hostility of the nations that's, around about. That's right. So all of that was basically prophesied. So we sort of have the evidence of the last hundred years. It, it, it is quite a story. Um, if you, even if you didn't have the Bible, you, yeah. folks, observers would say Certainly, this is a yeah. remarkable story. Ezekiel 36, Jeremiah 30, 31, Isaiah 11. Yeah. It's all there. And yeah. it's, it's happened and it's happening now. And you have this hostility, which is also there. Yeah. So you've got different widening trends of hostility, which you have mm. like Psalm 83, which is the nations round about. Yeah. Then you have Ezekiel 38 and 39, the power coming down from the north. And finally you have Armageddon, all the nations coming together in conflict against Israel. Mm. Now clearly we're not yet at Armageddon, but you can see some of these, the trends are moving in that direction. Yeah. And um, now, um, uh, uh, Tony, you know, on the channel, there's been a lot of news coverage on Revelation TV, and many of you have seen that, and it's been shocking. Um, and there's been various sort of biblical discussions. Um, but I asked you just before, I asked Tony just before, is, is there any mention of, of Islam in, in, the, in the prophecies? And I'm very interested to hear your thoughts on that. I'm completely messing up your yeah, pattern well, of what you were going to talk about, but I'm very interested, and I think the viewers would be interested um, as well. There is a verse in Psalm 83 which I think does connect the present situation with Islam. Mm. 
But before I get into that, maybe I could just say a bit about the, yeah, the background do. of the situation, okay. because what we've seen in the last month has been something really uniquely horrible, which has yes. taken place. It's been mm. a torment almost to watch the news and mm. to hear of the terrible suffering, first of the Israelis and the massacres which took place mm. in October the 7th, and the incredibly brutal and violent actions of Hamas. And then Israel having to take action against Hamas, which then leads to the suffering of the Palestinians in Gaza, and the world attention then turning from being sympathetic to Israel to being hostile to Israel. Mm. And Israel facing this huge dilemma. And I have to say that Israelis have faced something which is truly traumatic, which has shaken them to the core. When I was just talking to my wife who, uh, before I came out, and she'd just been with a Jewish friend who has uh, relatives in Israel, and she was saying that people there are just traumatized, they're terrified. And she spoke about children saying to their mothers and fathers, will they come and take us away? Will you be there to help us? And people are really scared of what's happened and yeah. you know, they just see the potential for what could happen. If and and it's, the, it's the contrast of folks sort of living peacefully, relatively peacefully. Yeah. I, I mean, there's a, there must be an awareness of the threat even before October the 7th. But Yes. But the scale of what's, what happened... You yeah, know, I mean, it's com been compared to the Holocaust. And yeah. It was the biggest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust in a single day. Yeah. And it's horrendous. Mm. And the motivation behind it was the desire to destroy Israel, which comes yeah. back to the passage in, in Psalm 83. Okay, let's, ha let's have a look at that, because so, we have studied Psalm 83, but... Yeah. Um, before, but but you 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 found found a verse that that specifically talks about, um, and and I want to hear what your thoughts. Yeah, are. just I mean I'll just bring out a couple of points. I mean it says, "Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace. Do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult. Those who hate you have lifted up their head." Yeah, so that's the first two verses. First yeah. point is that it's your enemies, the people coming yeah. against Israel. Yeah. It's not just Israel's enemies; they're coming against God. So you're going to have some force which is anti-God mm. and ultimately anti-Christ as well, which is coming behind it. Yeah. And it says, they've taken crafty counsel against your people. They've consulted together against your shelter bonds. They've said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation mm. that the name of Israel be remembered no more. Mm. So behind this force, there is a, uh, an idea, if you like, that the name of Israel, which contains the name of God, Israel, Prince with God, mm. has to be cut off and replaced with another name. Mm. And if you look at what the uh, Hamas and other forces are saying, they're saying, let's get rid of Israel, let's remove it from mm. the map. Mm. Uh, you go to these demonstrations taking place now, this, what are they saying? From the river to the sea, Palestine mm. must be free. Mm. So if Palestine is free, then it's free from what? It's free from Jews and from Israel. Yeah. And ultimately they're saying, we have to get rid of Israel and get rid of the Jews. And one of the slogans also they're saying is Kaibar, Kaibar, the army of Muhammad is coming to get you. Yeah. Now, historically, that was a battle which was fought by the early Muslims against Jews, and Kaibar actually meant the extermination of the Jews mm. in the name of Allah <laughs> in, the, in the battle. So, first of all, you've got these people coming to say, let's make an end of Israel. Then it goes down. Uh, Later on, it gives a list of the countries. Just take a step back, because yeah. why, why, why is the, the, the hatred of God? I know it sounds a simplistic question, but that's the root of it, isn't it? It's yeah, saying, of, not you know, of, of the God of the Bible. So of the God of the, the Bible. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God yeah, and Father why? of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, so that's the question, why? Why? <laughs> Ultimately, because of Satan, who hates yeah. God. So yeah. behind all of these antichrist forces and anti-God forces, you have a power which is satanic. Mm. So if you have a religion which is based on an understanding of God, but which is a false God, mm. even an understanding of Jesus and a false Jesus and a false prophet, then what is the force behind that? That has to be satanic. Mm. And I mean, I don't want to be accused of Islamophobia. I mean, there are some no. very good Muslims and people who do no. good in the name of Islam. But well, all we're doing really is discussing the texts. Yeah, The mm. Islamic movement is a rejection of the God of the Bible, a rejection of Israel, and a rejection of Jesus Christ mm. as Saviour and Lord who died for our sins. Um, and that, w w it's fair to say that, you know, there, there are many Muslims who don't adhere 
to that yeah. view, but the so-called fundamentalists, so the, yeah. so you know, Israel's, who, who yeah. do adhere to these scriptures, they, yeah. they're the scriptures that... So Israel's problem, problem is with the radical Muslims. So, yeah. so ISIS, uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, the Islamic Revolution from Iran are all motivated by this Islamic Jihad teaching, which is a form of extreme Muslim coming from the Muslim Brotherhood and the radical Shiite revolution since 1979, was it 1979, yeah, the Khomeini yeah, Revolution yeah. in Iran. Now what's interesting, we go on in, on in the psalm, yeah. it speaks about the nations which are involved, then yeah. it says in verse 11, make their nobles like Oreb and like Ze'ev, yes all their princes like Zeba and Zalmunna, who said let us take for ourselves the pastures of God for a possession. Mm. So here you've got some people who are coming to say, let's take for ourselves, for ourselves, what God has given to somebody else. So if in the Bible it says that God's given the land to Israel, yeah. then these people are going to come and say, let's take it for ourselves and take it away from Israel. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing is about Zebra and Zalmunna. Now, I've not really heard anybody give a sermon no, on Zebra and Zalmunna. This is why I, want, I asked you the question, because <laughs> I haven't heard this, no. it's interesting. But if you look in Judges chapter 8, that's mm. where you find out about Zebra and Zalmunna. Mm. They were kings of Midian, who came against Israel in the times of Gideon. Yeah. And Gideon defeated them with his small army against a big army. Yeah. And you read in Judges 8.21 that... Uh, after he defeated them, he brought Zeba and Zalmunna before him and he executed them. Mm. And it then says he took the crescent ornaments from off the camel's necks. Yeah. Now, it depends which translation you've got. because so some verse just, 21 of Judges 8. Yeah, some yeah. translations, I think the AV just says ornaments. Yeah. But my translation here does say crescent ornaments. Mm. Now, I looked this up in Hebrew and the Hebrew word is saharonim, which relates to a word sahar, which means the moon, the crescent moon. Mm. So they've got crescent ornaments on the moons, on the, on the camels. Yeah. So is that just a sort of decoration or is it a dedication to the moon god yeah. in whose name they were coming? Yeah. Now you look at ancient Arabic culture and the moon god was Allah and Alat, his daughters as well. So you had some connection to Allah. Mm. And then Muhammad comes and takes the names of God on the, uh, the different gods on the Kaaba stone. He says Allah is the god and he takes the symbol of the crescent moon for the religion of yeah. Islam. Wasn't, wasn't he uh, told to clear out the, the gods as well, and one of them was the moon god, or am I confusing it? Yeah. Um, uh, the uh, angel Gabriel. I'm not sure about that clear. one, but certainly, okay. I mean, he, Allah yeah. and yeah. the moon god are yeah. connected. Yeah, okay, yeah. So it just occurs to me, having looked at this passage, that they're coming in the name of Islam to take away the land from Israel, and to give it to the Muslims. Mm. Mm. Now, you look at the Hamas Charter, that's exactly what yep. they say. I've got some quotes here from the Hamas Charter, if okay. I can find it. Yeah. Um, yeah. By the way, before I heard that you were, uh, you know, available to come in, I had, I had thought that oh, I, would, I would use this programme to talk about the Hamas Charter, so yeah. I'm pleased that you're mentioning it. So the Hamas Charter is the guiding rules, if you like. Um, in the preamble to the charter, it says Israel will exist and continue to exist until Islam obli will obliterate it, just as it has obliterated others before it. Mm. It goes on to say the Islamic resistance movement is a distinguished Palestinian movement whose allegiance is to Allah, whose way of life is Islam. It strives to raise the banner of Allah over every inch of Palestine. Mm. The land of Palestine is an Islamic waqf, possession, consecrated for future Muslim generations until Judgment <coughs> Day, no one can renounce any part of it or abandon it or any part of it. Mm. Palestine is an Islamic land. Since this is the case, the liberation of Palestine is an individual duty for every Muslim wherever he may be. So they see themselves as a religious movement yeah. rather than just a sort of Absolutely. political land and territory movement. And you have to understand that the Muslim worldview is that the world is divided into the Da'al al Islam, which means the house of Islam, mm. and the Da'al al Hab, which means the house of the enemy. Mm. In the Da'al Islam, the Muslims rule and Jews and Christians are allowed to have their communities, but they have to be under the Muslims mm. and they have to be ruled by the Muslims. Uh, so if this is reversed and dimmy people like Jews start taking over land, which they say is part of the Da'al Islam, the House mm. of Islam, particularly Jerusalem, which is the third holiest city in Islam, then the Muslims have to fight against it. Yeah. And interestingly, Hamas called this movement 
their latest raid, the Al-Aqsa Flood. Mm. So they're fighting for Al-Aqsa, which is the Al-Aqsa Mosque in, in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So they're miles away from Jerusalem. They were fighting in Gaza. Yeah. They still called it Al-Aqsa because they said this is what they're fighting for, the control of Jerusalem and the, the Temple Mount area, or yeah. what they call the Haram al-Sharif. So it is an Islamic movement. And, and, it's and a that was signed, movement. if I'm correct, in 1988. So it's not, it wasn't signed yesterday, that no, or no. created, let's say, no. this charter. And it's quite covenant. similar to the Palestine Liber Liberation, Liberation Organization's covenant, yeah. which also says that Israel has to be removed and replaced yeah. with a... Yeah, let's, uh, could we go into this area of, you know, what, what, what's the difference between Hamas and, <laughs> and Fatah and the, and the PLO? And, yeah. Um, because, um, and then the other question, I suppose, is people talk now about, and this is why the BBC aren't going into saying that Hamas is a terrorist organisation, because they, they I, I seem to be of the opinion that there's, that there's a moderate side to Hamas, and, you know, so we shouldn't brand the whole, the whole movement as, as terrorists. But when you read some of those, you know, articles of their... Yeah, I mean, Hamas has got its people who are running the government, I suppose, who might be more moderate than the terrorist people. Mm. But the motivation behind it is the destruction of Israel. That's the bottom line. Mm. And that's why Israel has to take action against it. Israel can't just <coughs> say, well, you know, sorry, you did this and we're really upset, but... Uh, you know, you can carry on if you like. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you know, the, uh, actually Joel, Rich, Joel uh, Rosenberg, I got a quote from him uh, speaking to a lieutenant colonel in the IDF who was Jewish, not a believer, but he said, we're facing the end times, the end of Israel, if we don't achieve a massive victory over the immense threat posed by Iran, Hezbollah and Hamas. Mm -hmm. So they're seeing it as a existential threat. And that's why Israel has to take action. That's why. So the idea of no a matter how are, painful it is, and no yeah. matter how many people will suffer, obviously they are suffering in Gaza. Yeah. Then Israel has to take this action to defend itself. Mm. And if it comes to it, they'll have to take action against Hezbollah, mm. and even against Iran. So this this idea of a ceasefire, you know, is not on the table as far as Israel is concerned. Well, if if that's if that's yeah. the objective to, yeah. to to remove. I Hamas. mean. Israel may be made to cease firing, but uh, Hamas won't be. <laughs> yeah. And their supporters won't be. They'll continue. Mm. So Israel's facing a huge problem. Mm. And uh, I mean, I really sympathize with them. They don't have an easy answer to it either, because even if they do manage to defeat Hamas in Gaza, which militarily they probably will do, they're then left with what do they do with Gaza itself? And what do they do with all the people who've been radicalized in the rest of the Arab world, particularly in the West Bank, who are, probably have far more supporters for Hamas than for Fatah, the Palestine Authority people. So Israel faces a huge problem and uh, you know, we have to really pray that they may have some solution to it. I mean, I think that it looks to me like they will actually prevail in militarily, but then what then? What happens next? So Tony no, we, was... We didn't get round to the... Yeah. Yeah, no, no, we, I, you, get round to it now because I've got another question, but yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah, so yeah. one of the things you're seeing in the West now is that the, the Hamas are the bad guys who want to destroy Israel, but then you've got the good guys who are, or the moderately good guys who yeah. are the Fatah and the Palestine Authority who are willing to live in a two-state solution alongside Israel. Yeah. Which on... I'm not sure surface, I ever believed that, but, um, yeah, but that's I mean, it's, how, how it's presented. From a purely human point of view, it sounds like you know, the solution. So you have two different yeah. people, let them live side by side in peace and uh, work if, it out. If, if they think like you do. Yeah. Um, I never forget Arafat after the, one of the Oslo s signings. He, um, he was questioned on an American show and the American interviewer said, so you want to live side by side in peace <laughs> alongside Israel. Yeah. And Arafat said yes, but you could see in his, you know, in his mind that, that he didn't really believe it himself. And then he said in Arabic, yes. the opposite. Yeah. Well, that's what they do. They say one thing in English and yeah. nothing else in Arabic. Mm. But I mean, the, the two-state solution, which this is all based on, is something which, you know, Britain agrees to, America agrees to, the EU, UN, 
that's the solution. Mm. But it involves the division of the land and the division of Jerusalem in particular. Mm. And as far as the Israelis are concerned, Jerusalem is the indivisible capital of Israel. Mm. Uh, as far as the Palestinians are concerned, the minimum demand they have is for Jerusalem as their capital, capital of yeah. their territory. Now, if you look at it historically, Israel actually from the beginning accepted a two-state solution. When the UN divided the land, there was going to be one part for Israel, one part for the Arabs. Yeah. The Arabs never accepted it because they wanted to destroy Israel at birth at 1948. Mm. And when they didn't destroy Israel, which on paper they should have done because they were much more numerous and had a more better equipped armies, and yeah. yet Israel prevailed, I believe, because God had made them prevail. Yeah. Then Jordan took over the West Bank, never accepted by anyone apart from, I think, Britain and Pakistan. Yeah. Egypt took the Gaza. And so it was until 1967 when they again tried to destroy Israel and then Israel, as you know, <laughs> yeah. succeeded in and taking... And the PLO was, was set up at a time yeah. so when... Can we yeah, just the explain the PLO. The PLO. Yeah. So the oh, should I just say to our folks who are patiently waiting yeah. to see when are you going to read the emails, I, I, if you weren't here at the start of the show, I, I said that we, we will um, by all means email in, but we're going to go through this overview of Israel and the world, and, and then I'll read your emails in the second part of, of the show. So please be patient with me. Thanks, okay. Tony. So the Palestine Liberation Organization was set up in 1964 when West Bank was part of Jordan, uh, Gaza was part of Egypt. So the aim was to liberate Israel yeah. and turn it into Palestine. Yeah. Um, then 67, the Arabs lost and then they concerned to take back the West Bank and Gaza. But the interesting date was actually in 1974, the year after the Yom Kippur War, mm. when the PLO actually decided that the Arab armies were not going to defeat Israel in battle. So they then put what they called the 10 points phase policy. Mm. The 10 points phase policy was that they would agree to take any territory which Israel drew to withdraw from and then use that territory as the basis of a, a bridgehead to attack and destroy the rest of Israel. Mm. Um, now, when they came to 1993 with the Oslo Accords, basically that was what they were agreeing to. They were going to take part of the territory, Gaza, yeah. Jericho first, then to expand it. Because Arafat got into a bit of hot water. Yeah, and some, some um, of the Arabs you know, said, well, what are you doing dealing with the Israelis? We're not supposed to deal with them. We're supposed to just uh, attack them. He said, well, this was the phase policy we all agreed to back in 1974. Mm. And if you look at it, Basically, I don't think he ever intended to live in peace with Israel. He intended to use it as the base to then dismantle Israel. Mm. And s at least two times Israel then offered the Palestinians basically a state on most of what they wanted in 2000 with Barak and then in 2008 with Ehud Olmert. Mm. And they declined. And they, Arafat launched the Intifada, which yeah. led to the separation yeah. and so on. So one has to believe that they never intended really to live alongside in peace with Israel. Yeah. And they still don't. Yeah. I mean, right now, the Palestinian Authority, they applauded the Gaza attacks. Yeah. Uh, they said to the mosques that they should teach the people in Palestine, in the Palestine Authority, to uh, hate Israel. And, and we're talking about current news now. Yeah, currently now. Yeah, October 20, yeah. 23, this is Palestine Media Watch. It said, uh, they called all mosques must teach that the extermination of Jews is an Islamic imperative. Mm. PA Minister of Religious Affairs posted guidelines for mosque preachers on Thursday, instructing preachers what content they should include in their Friday, Friday sermons. Included a quote from the Hadith, uh, Islamic tradition attributed to Muhammad, which teaches that at the end of time, the redemption of humanity is contingent upon Muslims killing and eventually exterminating all Jews. Mm. So I don't know whether you've got in your writings that, that, that I, I think the Hamas charter uh, quotes that, that the, the Islamic verse that talks about if you see yeah. a Jew hiding this is it, behind yeah. a tree. The hour of resurrection will not come until the Muslims fight the Jews and kill them, <coughs> until the Jews hide behind the rocks and trees and a rock 
or a tree will say, Muslim, O servant of Allah, there's a Jew behind me, come and kill him, except the Galkad tree, which is the tree of the Jews. So... Yeah, so what I would, you know, just sitting, you know, in the comfort of the West yeah. would, would be asking of Western commentators and the media is why, why isn't this on every headline, yeah. you know, asking for Islamic leaders to refute it? Yeah, well, they don't want to. <laughs> but but it, for me, it's, it's just so incompatible with our, our way of life and our values. Yeah. Um, but it's, okay, so you haven't got is, an answer to that. I, I haven't got an answer to no, it. I, I, well, I mean, we're afraid to upset I mean, apart the Muslims from spiritual and we don't want to uh, offend, to offend. Them or Yeah, yeah. And of course, not all Muslims believe that. I'm not, no. One has to, has to say no. that. But that's the radical form of Islam does believe that. And the Palestinian Authority, which is supposed to be wanting to live in peace with Israel, alongside yes. it, is propagating this. And applauding. I mean, there's another thing. A fatter leader on the official PATV celebrated the massacre of women and babies as a morning of victory, a morning of joy, a morning of pride, and called on in the name of al Fatah to all our Palestinian people to take action and participate in this story of heroism. Hmm. So that's Israel's peace partner. <laughs> yeah, and uh, by the way, we saw, you know, in social media here in Britain, people saying how happy they were. I mean, there was a girl on a, yeah. on a post. And I mean, all these young saying, people marching through the streets and yeah. shouting for... They're basically applauding this agenda. And they're applauding the agenda which always means the end of Israel. Yeah. And I saw someone on the, they were saying, uh, doesn't from the river to the sea mean the end of Israel? And she tried to say, no, it means, you know, the, Palace, the Arabs will be free during yeah. Israeli control. But it does mean the end of Israel. Yeah. And that's what they're calling for. And Israel doesn't want to be made the end of. And so no. Israel's going to fight back. And Israel has a very efficient and very powerful army and they will do what they can to defend their country and why not? And we would yeah. support them in doing that because I believe that God has put them there and God's given them the ability and the will to hold out against this force. But it's a, a real hammer blow to Israel what's taken place and it's unsettled them tremendously. So, so, so some say, well, it was triggered by Iran because of the, Os uh, the not the Oslo, the Abraham Accords yeah, and, and the fear of, of an alignment with, with Saudi yeah. Arabia. That's right, because um, Israel was in the process of trying to make an agreement with Saudi Arabia, which Netanyahu hailed as being the, 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 the great beacon of peace. So they'd have Arabia, Israel, and a channel going right through the Middle East, from India through to Europe, which would bring peace and prosperity to the region, which would be, on paper, a good idea. <laughs> and dare I ask, is that is 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 there any oh, by reading the prophecies? Because I'm I'm quite good at looking back and saying, well, that's a fulfilment. Yeah. You know, Israel, Jerusalem. You know, you can look back, but it's quite difficult to say you know, this is going to happen yeah. um, next. But, but in the prophecies concerning, let's say, Saudi Arabia, and, you know, is, is there any mention of them? I, they're leading questions. I know some yeah, of Yeah, I mean, there are, obviously there are things which have not yet happened. Yeah. Um, you've got the War of Gog and Magog, Ezekiel 38 mm. and 39, mm. army coming down from the north. And it appears that Arabia, um, it says, what is it, um, Sheba and Dedan, protest against this. So that's the area of Arabia. So they're not right. joining in it. They're a, a group. Sort of abstaining or, or protesting yeah. against the, the north. Yeah. And Egypt and Jordan don't seem to be involved either. So you've got the okay. countries which are basically in some kind of a peace agreement with Israel now. Yeah. yeah. Where you've got the force coming down from the north, which some say is Russia, could be Turkey, mm. could be Persia, certainly is Persia, Iran, mm. coming against Israel mm. in the War of Gog and Magog. Mm. Um, well, there is a kind of alliance, isn't there? Oh, yeah, there's already them. Them. I mean, of now, whether Turkey, that is... Turkey's take, uh, is playing a cautious game with Russia at the moment, but they're certainly yeah. hostile to yeah. Israel. And Turkey's actually talked about sending troops down to help the Palestinians. Mm. Uh, whether they... I mean, they've got a strong army as well, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, they've got a historic connection with the region as well from the Ottoman time. So you've got all these things coming together. You've also got the Western Alliance looking for a peace agreement. You've got Jerusalem at the center of it. Jerusalem, the burdensome stone of Zechariah chapter 12, where it says that Jerusalem's going to be a burdensome stone, burdening all nations. Mm. And the nation's trying to make an agreement which would 
uh, solve the issue of who rules Jerusalem. Now one possibility is that out of this present situation you then have Israel prevailing in Gaza and holding back the force from the north. Mm. The present time it looks like Hezbollah has They won't be thanked for it, will they? I no. mean, well, by the world. I mean, it's, you know, by the political world. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at the same time, one has to say that the moderate Arabs actually don't like Hamas and they don't like Hezbollah and they don't yeah. like, certainly they don't like Iran for what they're doing. Yeah. So there's a possibility for a peace agreement coming through there. Um, years ago, Tony, I, you know, traveling to Israel, and I, I had a newspaper. I just want to mention that, make this point that I, um, I even had a camera. It was a camera I bought from Howard Conder, and I, I was filming church leaders, yeah. and they were condemned, utterly con Palestinian leaders and others, condemning Israel. And yeah. I even went to the Bethlehem Bible College, and it was evangelical, yeah. and they were saying the same. So afterwards, I said, do you really believe that? Is that true? And they said, oh. Oh, no, no, we have to say that. Yes. Otherwise, we'll be in danger. Is that what's happening in the whole Arab world? Let's say these potential, you know, sort yeah. of um, uh, yeah, prospects yeah. for peace, yeah, I mean, for uh, the Abraham Accords. They're, they're obviously condemning Israel at the moment because they've got a fear of the, the violence on yes, the streets. Yes, I mean, they've condemned Israel, but they haven't actually made any sanctions against Israel, which is what Iran and others wanted them to do at this recent okay. uh, conference they had in Saudi. Yeah. So, you know, there's still a possibility, and Saudi is still talking about the possibility of reaching an agreement with Israel. Okay. So if that happens, then you could be on the way to the Daniel 927 yeah. covenant for the seven years, also spoken of in Isaiah 28. Mm. Mm. So you have a time when there is some kind of a peace agreement, yeah. and, with, and this, probably the Western nations come in, and also this world well, leader, the Antichrist, yeah. arises mm. with a peace proposal. Mm. Then you could have the War of Gog and Magog, and then the temple and the abomination of desolation leading up to Armageddon mm. and the second coming. Now, and the Lord did speak. I mean, it's one of the, the sort of distinctive elements of his Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24. He, he spoke about a reenactment of the abomination yeah, that causes absolutely. desolation. Yes, yeah. And he said, you know, let the reader understand, look back at Daniel and see what happened yeah. in the time Good, of Antiochus. Before we bring in emails, and thank you for your patience, everyone who's, who's been watching this, and for me it's absolutely fascinating, is um, what about what's been going on? Uh, you've mentioned, of course, the trauma uh, uh, after October the 7th, but but generally, in recent times, what's been happening within Israel, yes. you know, it is... Yeah, it would, would like just to say a bit about what's There's happening. There's some social trends, Israel. yeah. Um, because in the last year, you've seen this huge division between the secular and the religious, the conflict yeah. over the Supreme Court and the demonstrations in Tel Aviv and uh, yeah. so on. And you've got a great divide between secular and religious Israel. Mm. And you know what was interesting when Netanyahu made this comment about the uh, agreement with Saudi Arabia, he said about the blessing and the curse. He said that the blessing would be the peace agreement, the curse would be war. Mm. And he mentioned Deuteronomy. Now, if you look in Deuteronomy, the blessing comes when Israel obeys the Lord, doesn't worship other gods and keeps his commandments. The mm. curse comes when they don't. Mm. Now, the big problem in Israel today is that you have a huge secular party yeah. that's going into... And they're as liberal as liberal, anywhere on earth. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Tel Aviv is the gay capital of the Middle East. You've got mm. abortion. And even this incident at the, the, um, the concert by Gaza. The rave. They yeah. were dancing under an image of Buddha, having psy trance music played to them, which creates an altered state of consciousness and introducing kind of new agey concepts. Wow. So you have this, could yeah. say, they're doing everything which the Bible says they shouldn't be doing, bringing other gods in and other forces. Mm. Then you have the religious, so is the answer to go back to Orthodox Judaism. Now, Orthodox Judaism has brought in all kinds of rabbinic teachings, which are additions to the Bible, mm. and which screen out Jesus being the Messiah. Yeah. Now, from God's point of view, we're now living in the time of the New Covenant, so ultimately God wants to bring back to Yeshua, to Jesus the Messiah, which is what happens in Zechariah chapter 12, when they look upon me whom they have pierced and mourn for him 
as for an only son, mm. as God corrects what Israel's got wrong, which is in, Zechariah, in Jeremiah chapter 30, and brings them back to Yeshua. So in the end, it does come back to the Messiah, mm -hmm. and God's dealing with Israel to bring them to recognize Yeshua, Jesus, as the Messiah. And the only one who can sort this mess out, who is Jesus, and yeah. the only one who can sort it out is by coming back himself and setting up his messianic kingdom, which mm -hmm. this is heading towards, which is yeah. the good news which we can look up to yeah, in and, the coming um, of the Lord. And for, for Christians, you know, um, I think we could mention your your um, your booklets, which is also online, isn't it? Yes. You know, yeah, you're right you're sort of you're you're not. It's not all doom and gloom. Then you're you're no, warning. Friends, hope. So. Yeah, yeah, I think they put it up on yeah, the, sure. on the Jesus screen. Jesus the Messiah. So we produce this every three months, slide yeah. for last days. Yeah. Our latest edition was actually upstaged by the war, so I had to slightly rewrite it. Okay. Yeah. But we do it also in other languages, in French and German and Spanish, Chinese. <laughs> So we want to get the message out. So if anybody wants to get the magazine, yeah, uh, let me know. And, and uh, I think it's up on the screen as well. The, e we the email, uh, no, uh, the web address. Yeah, that's great. Shall I? Shall we risk some um, yeah, e go, emails? Go let's let's go yeah. for it. And please, you know, far away. Um, this is this is your program as much as ours. But I thought it was useful to have have that overview from. Uh, Tony, this is from Laura. I've been doing a Bible study at church looking at Ezekiel. Our pastor doesn't think that he is talking about what is happening right now in Israel. Who do you think Gog and Magog is? In brackets, is it Russia? I do believe something's happening, but was led to believe that only when all these things happen at once, e.g. wars, famines, etc., is when Jesus will return. This may be uh, uh, just the beginning. Uh, quite alarmingly, Hezbollah warned Israel to be careful as there is a, a, a billion Arabs ready and willing to take up the sword. Things could very well get much worse. Any thoughts? Uh, well, yes, indeed. I mean, it's a process. It'll get more difficult as we get nearer to the second coming. Mm -hmm. um, the decoding Ezekiel is an interesting operation. Ezekiel 36 clearly speaks about a return of the Jewish people to the land, the desolate land becoming fertile again, the trees being planted, ancient cities being rebuilt, which does tie in with what's taking place mm. now. It says, mm. first of all, they'll be born physically, then spiritually. Yeah. You have the dry bones and so on, the spiritual rebirth. Mm. Then in 38 and 39, you have this army which comes down from the north. Now that's the question, was it Russia? Is it Turkey? Is it an Islamic army? Uh, it specifically says it will happen at a time after the Jews have returned from the land, have returned from the nations and are back in the land. Yeah. It speaks about the latter days, so it <coughs> appears that this is about a last yeah. day's prophecy. Mm. Um, there are a lot of connections which do point to it to being Russia. Mm. Now, Russia's a bit out of it now because of the Ukraine situation. Even using the term Rus, isn't that, yeah, isn't Rus, that a bit of a giveaway? Yeah, Missy Rosh, Prince yeah. of Russia. Yeah, um, yeah they are tied up Persia, with Ukraine. Russia, which is clearly yeah. Iran, Tagama may well be Turkey. Mm -hmm. And all of those countries are involved in Syria right now. Russia's got yeah. a bases in Syria. Israel is threatened to attack uh, north, the, the countries to the north, uh, so Lebanon, and even Damascus. I mean, I read a report actually that Israel said that if Hezbollah get involved, they will attack not just Beirut and Lebanon, but also Damascus. Because there's been an axis, hasn't there, from yeah. across from Iran through Syria. Yeah. yeah. So that could draw in these powers coming down from the north. Mm. Mm. Uh, one of the issues also they say is that Israel beings, uh, the, the AB says to be living peaceably. But if you look it up in Hebrew, it doesn't say shalom, it says betach. Betach means with security. Mm. So it appears that Israel will have some kind of security at this time. So it could be after a peace deal is made. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. Um, okay, um, Ed, Eddie's uh, written. He's, uh, we, um, Ed, Eddie faithfully writes into our programs with with the um, sign off atheist and pro-Israel. Uh, yes. And he said, not all evangelicals agree with Tony. This oh. is a quote by John Stott. Of Zionism, both political and Christian, is incompatible with the biblical faith. Yeah. Um, yeah most, I mean, not all, very few Stephen do Sizer. actually, I'm afraid we're a minority. No, that, yeah, that's true, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, John Stott, um, I know he took a 
different view. Yeah. And I mean, the problem with this is the Zionism's a political movement. It's not, it wasn't even based on religious Judaism. I mean, Herzl was a yeah. non religious Jew, yeah. uh, seen as a kind of Jewish uh, national identity movement. Yeah. But, I mean, but they God, were very much influenced by evangelical. They were, yes. I Zionists. mean, there was a man called Heckler and yeah. uh, David Barron, who was a Messianic Jew, went to the Zionist conference and he saw the, the gathering of the dry bones, as it were. Mm. Amazing. And Ezekiel, Ezekiel 36 implies that, first of all, it'll be a physical rebirth, followed by a spiritual rebirth. Mm. So the fact that Israel is a fairly secular nation. Uh, is almost a fulfilment is of, pretty well of what, what it, it says, says, you know, and that through the events, and this is what I w perhaps was trying to say a bit earlier, that through the events, which will be very difficult and troublesome, the time of Jacob's trouble, Israel will be made to search themselves, even to search the scriptures, and to seek God, and to find that the answer is not actually in Talmudic Orthodox Judaism, but is in the New Covenant through Yeshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And Jesus himself said that the, the uh, Jewish people would be scattered to the ends of the earth, to the nations. And he said that Jerusalem would be trodden down of the Gentiles. And one of the things he said was that this would happen because you did not know the time of your visitation. Mm. Otherwise, you didn't recognize in me the Messiah. Yeah. Now, many Jews did accept Jesus as Messiah and spread the message, but the Orthodox didn't. Mm. So the implication is that the restoration of Israel will involve the Jewish people coming to recognize Yeshua, Jesus as the Messiah, and then he returns and sets up the Messianic Kingdom, yeah. ruling from Jerusalem for a thousand years with peace and justice. I, I always find it amazing, and in fact one of the, the stamps of authenticity on the scriptures that Romans 11 says that they would not believe yeah. that Jesus is yeah. the Messiah. I mean, and then that's sort of counterintuitive because you would have thought they're the first people you know, yes. you know, with all the scriptures that they have yeah. and the prophecies that they have. But I mean, most of the church is actually influenced by what we call replacement theology. Yeah. So that the church has replaced Israel. That's right. So any prophecies about Israel being restored actually refer to the church. Yeah. So, which is difficult. Because I mean, like in Jeremiah, it says, Hear the word of the Lord, O you nations. He who scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a flock. Shepherd does his flock. Yeah. So the scattering was literal, so the gathering is also going to be literal. Yeah. Logically. And the Lord hasn't scattered the church that no. I'm aware of. No. So, so yeah, it is a bit of a um, strange one, a selective replacement theology. Yeah. So, I mean, God has replaced the access to him from being through the Torah and the sacrifices, yeah. the Levitical sacrifices, with repentance and faith in Jesus the Messiah now. Yeah. So there is a replacement with the That's new covenant. Right. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that God has replaced the church. Um, the living Israel. stones in the land, yeah. uh, they're the rightful heirs to the land of Israel, yeah. which so some argue. Israel remains a people. And one of the remarkable yeah. things of history is that despite being scattered to the nations, Israel has remained a people. Jeremiah says, as long as the sun, the moon, and the stars are shining, so long will Israel be a nation before me, says the Lord. Jeremiah 31. Very powerful. Immediately after the New Covenant passage, by the way, in oh. Jeremiah. So if you're the enemy of God, you'll want to disprove those scriptures Absolutely, by destroying yeah. the Jewish people. Yeah, and if, I mean, if Jesus has got to come back to Jerusalem as the, to be the capital of the world even, yeah. it's still got to be Jewish Jerusalem. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's, um, so Tinder has, has written, um, according to the Islamic end times, their saviour who returns in the end days is a person called the Mahdi, yeah. um, the 12th descendant of the prophet Muhammad. He yeah. will kill anyone who does not convert to Islam. However, the ironic thing is that they, he will begin by making a seven year peace treaty with Israel. Sound familiar? Question mark. Sound familiar? Uh, apparently he will also return with the Islamic Jesus called Issa, Issa yes. will tell everyone he wasn't crucified and destroy all crucifixes and also be the Mahdi's chief executioner. To me, it bears an uncanny resemblance to the Antichrist and the false prophet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, amazing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And that's what's motivating, I mean, especially the Iranians, they've got the big idea about the Mahdi being, uh, coming out of uh, some, there's a mosque in 
Iraq. Yes, in Samarra, where he's, or one of them. He's supposed to be yeah. buried there, and he's going to yeah. sort of re revise it again and mm. gather all the armies together against Jerusalem yeah. with this Isa al Masih, which is a false mm. Jesus. None of that's in the Quran, by the way. All these are sort of stories they've invented over years. Later. Some Later. of them based on sort of twisted versions of the biblical apocalypse. Yeah, amazing. Um, Ian writes, uh, hi Tim, we shall see no peace till Islamists are, are destroyed and also ultimate peace till Jesus returns. Furthermore, if the army are not deployed, then the Brits shall take to the streets and purge it of Islamists. I'm not sure they will. The <laughs> um, finally, I got British. a word from Matthew 24, 7 about civil war in the UK. I had, I had the word kingdom, um, some stand out, referring to the UK, to finish Israel. Uh, to finish, um, Israel should give no land and have no ceasefire. That's what Ian says. Uh, yeah, well, um, okay. We, we, we read, we read um, um, emails yeah, as I they mean, come in. Um, I think the British have kind of lost the plot, I mean, for sure. <laughs> mm. Well, the Britain of a hundred years ago, yeah. or, or even the Britain of the, of the last war, is not the Britain of today, sadly. And we should uh, stand by Israel. Yeah. I mean, it's been heartening that actually Rishi Sunak has made some yes, he statements has. in yeah. favour of Israel. Yeah. But I think that it doesn't go far enough. They shouldn't, shouldn't allow these demonstrations to take place. Such. Um, Paul and Ruth ask, um, would it be safe to say that Hamas is communist? Um, mm. Russia, China, etc. Are they not all against Israel? Anyone, any country that wants to tear down Christian belief surely is the Antichrist. Yeah, um, but yeah, they're not. They're they're not communists, are there they? There are different but forms of Antichrist. I yes. mean, yeah. Mm. The devil doesn't mind whether you're a communist or a fascist or whatever. I mean, you could say that even that Hitler and Stalin were two sides of the same coin, but they were yeah. enemies of each other. Um, Hamas is definitely not communist. I mean, it's, no, a, it's, a it's more fascist. It's just uh, yeah. extremist movement. Yeah. I mean, Russia's not communist anymore either, actually. So. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's an interesting comparison between you know, Hitler and the Fuhrer Princip and the supreme leader of, of Iran. You know, the, yeah. the, there are uh, sort of parallels, which, yes. are, which are, stra you know, yeah. there's an uncanny resemblance. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, mean, I mean, Satan recycles the same. Yeah. Thing. He doesn't mind really what, what you believe as long as you don't believe in Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and, mm. and he's quite happy for you to be a raving Marxist or a yeah. fascist or a Islamist yeah. or whatever, as long yeah. as you don't repent of your sins and believe the gospel. Mm. Yeah. Which tells us the only answer to all of this is the gospel. I mean, you know, there's no yeah. human solution to these problems. The only solution is that people should believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to mm. be saved and that he has died for our sins, he's buried and he's coming back again and yeah. he's going to sort out the mess which humans have made of the planet. Yeah. And um, okay, I'll, before asking my questions so we don't run out of time, I'll ask some of, uh, more of yours. Wonderful booklet, Tony, we get from, uh, it's an non -anon anonymous um, uh, email, a text. Um, the last, I gave my last copy to an Iranian taxi driver who had no religion. <laughs> together with the Heart newspaper and anything else I could get my hands on. Yeah. And also, I gave them the son of Hamas. Uh, that's a, a, yeah. Yeah. an amazing story. Um, Jean writes, blessings to all at Rev TV and viewers. Totally agree with you both. Israel has the right to defend themselves and what nation wouldn't defend itself and citizens after October the 7th. The truth is being turned upside down and twisted by the news channels. I'm not denying citizens in Gaza are not being caught up in this war, but in all wars, it's the citizens who suffer. Israel is a peaceful nation, but most of the world is against them just now for simply defending themselves. Everything is heading to the great battle we see it unfolding, but look up. We will see our redemption draws near. Come, Lord Jesus. Absolutely. Yeah. Jean. Yeah, I mean, is Hamas is responsible for this all. I mean, Hamas started it. Hamas has built the tunnels underneath. They put the tunnels underneath yeah. the hospitals. They use the citizens as shields and they're oppressing the citizens as well. So, you know, Israel is caught in a trap by this violence. They would like to live in peace with their neighbours, but they can't because of... But it's not portrayed. So our media, so-called professional, you know, journalists, yep. tend to, you know, interpret... Are they, is it inbuilt for them to well, just listen to Hamas 
verbatim and then they're, say, they're all well, prejudiced against Israel for sure. Yeah, which so, is again, there's something spiritual about that because yeah. it doesn't seem natural that they should do that. Debs writes again, thanks for a great program. Thank God I had the privilege of visiting Israel back in 2010 with Rev TV. I'm horrified as to what's happening in what's happened in Israel. I just watched an interview today with Piers Morgan interviewing uh, Moseb Hassan Youssef, son of the founder of Hamas. Would recommend your viewers to check it out. Best interview I've seen. By the way, Debs, um, Simon did an interview uh, long before Piers Morgan, and yeah. so it's worth, it's worth looking at Simon's interview as well. I'll, I'll just see if I can catch uh, the last couple of emails. I just had a thought, Brian says, whether or not, by coincidence, the five letters that make up the name Islam also appear in Ishmael's name. Um, that's just, actually, I've just lost that one off the screen. But is that true, or um, is that just... Um, uh, Islam means submission. Yeah. Exactly. So they're submitted to Allah. Ishmael is... Exactly. I mean, Ismail is the Arabic for it, and he is treated as yeah. a prophet in Islam. Yeah. Yeah, so, sorry, I've got it back. Could, could it be that Islam represents a false prophet who, together with the dragon as a serpent, the beast that is ridden by the woman, or a type of the church that is presented, that is described in Revelation as a money system in the last days for buying and selling, as it now seems to be controlled by all as a struggle that is in opposition to olive oil. I think there's a little bit too much in that one, Brian, <laughs> um, but it's good that you've, you've, you're thinking about those, those things. I think that is, um, I've, got, I've got Debs, I think we've, we've got through. So we're in the last five minutes, yes. um, Tony. Um, what, what should Christians be doing today? Um, we, we, don't, we shouldn't be looking into endless genealogies, but, but what should, no. we, should we be doing in this complex world that we're living in? Right. Well, I think we should obviously preach the gospel, mm. which is the answer. Yeah. We should certainly pray for Israel and pray for the unsaved people of the world and stand, stand by Israel. I mean, our church is in the middle of a Jewish neighborhood. We've just given out a little leaflet sort of with some solidarity to Jewish people. Yeah. We've had a lot of very positive response. So if we can stand by Israel and talk to Jewish people and tell them that we're standing with them because they feel very isolated and very kind of uh, yeah. oppressed at this time. Um, we should resist the devil and all his works. Yeah, yeah. And expose evil. It says in, what does it say in Ephesians, something about exposing the works of darkness. Yeah. And I think that uh, there's a lot of darkness which is unexposed because of the kind of liberal, lefty, we mustn't upset anybody. Yeah. So we can't actually say something is evil when it is evil. Yeah. <laughs> and we can't speak about the... Uh, real threat to humanity which is coming from some of these forces around the world mm -hmm. and yeah we got to believe the bible as well i mean this is the book which tells you the answer and most of the churches uh, thrown uh, it uh, not uh, well that was one of the questions i've got here so many churches appear to be silent yeah. about what is happening why do you think this is yeah because i mean most don't take a literal view of the bible so you spiritualize or you allegorize Genesis, Revelation, yeah. and therefore, you know, these are just stories you can... Treat when as you're faced with prophecies that are but, clearly yeah, um, that if you, written, yeah, yeah, I it's mean, difficult it, to allegorize it, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. And I mean, what I read in the beginning from Matthew 24, it's, it's not something that can be allegorized, it's, it's happening now. Mm. And you've got a whole lot of things happening now which are tying in with biblical prophecy including a lot of the environmental problems and the uh, economic problems. We haven't even touched on that right. one, but mm. you, know, you can see the way in which the world's heading towards the one world political system mm. with a mark of the beast kind of mm. set up in which you can't yeah. buy and sell unless you have the authority through the digital networks. Yeah. And you can see it all shaping up. Mm. So if that's the case, then either you get depressed by it and think, oh, it's all doom and gloom, or you say, what Jesus said, when you see these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your heads. Yeah. Your redemption is drawing near. Jesus is coming. And, and try and, and the win yeah. fellow believers. Because yeah, you said, the you know, look, people need to believe in Jesus. Well, there are, as we've said, there are people who believe in Jesus, but they don't, they don't want to yeah. take the... Um, and we've got... They don't want to take the prophecy. We've got hundreds of leaflets we give out. Yes. We've got one hope for the future, which we... Okay. You can just take and put them through your neighbor's doors if you want. And people have done that. We get letters coming back. 
Yeah. You mentioned somebody speaking to an Iranian taxi driver. We've got it in Farsi as well. So. You're joking. <laughs> what, so, because you've got light for the last Not days. Not the magazine, just one of our leaflets. Okay, okay. okay. But light for the last days is translated into um, French, German, Spanish, and Spanish, Chinese, Romanian. That's amazing. Malayalam, which is an Indian language. That's yeah. and it's and it's a monthly. No, no, it's a it's three mo monthly. It's a three monthly. Okay. Yeah. So, so I do four a year. Okay, but that's still quite a quite something to try yeah, do yeah. that translation. I don't do the translation. No, no, but I'm, I mean, whoever's doing yeah, it, that's yeah. quite something to yeah. do that. It's not yeah. chat. It's not chat GPT, is it? Because no. <laughs> you wouldn't, no. and you're absolutely sure that what's written is what you. Oh, yes, well, I mean, I, the French and the German ones I can read, yeah. but the yeah. others I take it on trust. Anyway, Tony, we're in we're in the last minute. I just want to say it's um, for me. It's it's a very it's an electrifying subject. It's not just a sort of oh so what yeah. type of subject to yeah. see God's word that's that's alive today. Yes. Um, in our lives, you've got one final comment. We got. 30 seconds left, so make it quick. <laughs> All right, Maranatha, Jesus is coming. That's um, really good. <laughs> I think we agree Jerusalem, with that. Yerushalayim, pray for yes. the peace of Israel, Jerusalem. Yeah, exactly. Tony, thank you so much. It's good thank to you. see you looking God bless you. so well. And thank you also, everyone who's, who's written in. And you can, of course, watch repeats of this program. And I hope, you know, it will excite you to really study God's Word, search the Scriptures, be like the men of Issachar, you know, know the times that you're living in and look up. Thank you so much for joining us.